By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And welcome at the Knights of Thorn in Deventer, the Netherlands. This is tournament number eight of the oldest old school magic the gathering tournament that we have here in the netherlands it is organized by mari so mari thank you again for organizing this great event also a thank you to dion he helped me to film everything so he's got stellar equipment that he brought with him to give you the best possible uh, images and recordings of these duels now today we are going to look at a match between Coase who's on power monolith it's a red and blue deck and he's taking on Martin and Martin is playing with the Fujuren Enchantress his deck is green and blue and both of these decks are just absolutely stunning because these guys have insane magic collections now before I go to the decks with lovely deck photos I would first like to point out that as always you can also skip that section by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps one of those timestamps reads MTG games if you click on there it will take you straight to the action but I would really advise you to kind of stick around because you want to see these beautiful deck photos I mean I'm seeing forces of nature I'm seeing a lot of blackboarded good stuff this is this is too cool, you know? You, let's just start with the deck deck, shall we? I'm gonna start with the deck of Coast. Let's take a look at this Power Monolith Brew. And here we see the deck of Coast. So Power Monolith, right? So this deck is about two cards, Basil Monolith and Power Artifact. So Basil Monolith is an artifact for three mana to cast. You can tap it for three mana and then you can untap it for three mana again. Now important here is that that untap doesn't have to be during your untap step, right? You can do that whenever. It doesn't untap during your untap step, by the way. So you gotta pay three, but you can do that anytime. Doesn't have to be your upkeep, doesn't have to be your untap step. You can do this as a fast effect. Now this is really important. So remember, tapping gives you three mana and then you also have to invest three mana to untap it again. Sounds pretty balanced, right? Well, it gets pretty bonkers if you put a power artifact on it. Power artifact, a card from antiquities for two blue to cast that reads enchant artifacts activated ability cost two less to activate. That means if I put a power artifact on my bezel monolith, I can now untap my bezel monolith for one mana. That means that if I then tap it again, I have a profit of two mana. So I can generate an endless amount of mana if I put my power artifact on my bezel monolith. Now, what are you gonna do with all that mana? Very simple, you're gonna build a huge fireball. We see four fireballs in the deck. We see four disintegrates in the deck. And basically every X spell gets a lot better with infinite mana, right? Like a lot, a lot better. A nice thing to note here is that he's also playing with a Brain Geyser. He can actually use his Power Monolith combo to uh, Brain Geyser his opponent to death. Now that would be pretty cool to see. So um, yeah, I mean, this deck is, is looking mighty strong and I think it's gonna be kind of tough for Martin to beat it with his Enchantress deck. But um, let's take a look at his list and see how strong his deck is. And here we see the deck of Martin and ah oh man, this deck, it is so cool. First off, it's all blackboarded good stuff. We've got tons of cool altars in this deck, but just what he wants to do is, is, is really cool as well. So he's playing for Duran, for Duran Enchantress, right? Four copies of the Enchantress in the deck. Now Enchantress is a card, two green and one, a creature human druid, and it reads, whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you may draw a card. So it makes sense. If you play with this card, you're going to play with a lot of enchantments. So we see Wild Groves, we see Sylvan Library, we see Copy Artifacts, a lot of control magics. I feel kind of bad here for this matchup for Martin, especially before sideboarding, because those four control magics are going to be dead cards. Um, you know, the copy artifacts are going to be okay. I guess you've got, you know, your Basil Monolith to copy, but they're not great. Of course, you can also target your own mana rocks to copy. That kind of works, especially in combination with those bigger creatures that Martin has in the deck as well, because look at that. He's playing two Maamoti Jins, two Force of Wills main. That is super cool. He's also playing with three clones. Clone and Fujiro and Enchantress also goes together quite well, right? You can start cloning your Enchantresses, and then for each enchantment, you draw two cards. It gets out of hand kind of quick. I also love Sylvan Library and Fujiro Enchantress together in a deck because with uh, Sylvan Library, of course, it is an enchantment, so you already draw a card, but also you can uh, manipulate what you're gonna draw next, so you can choose to draw enchantments that will gonna uh, even help you draw more cards, go through your deck faster. Personally, I think I would have added maybe some more Sylvan Libraries in the deck, but then again, it's hard to make space. I also love the inclusion here of Lay Druid. Lay Druid is a nice 
combo piece together with wild growth well nice synergy i guess i should say wild growth is an enchant land that says when you tap your land for mana you get a green as well so you get like a bonus green mana so you can tap your island and then you get an island and a green so you get two mana instead of one now with lay druid you can untap a land so you can of course untap the land enchant it with wild growth so you can get four mana out of a single land which is quite nice i mean i'm hoping to see martin use lay druid wild growth strategy to kind of ramp out like an early mamo to your force of nature that would be absolutely epic now um in this case i do want to look a little bit to his uh, at his sideboard as well because in his sideboard there are some really good cards against coast now coast of course being on power monolith so he wants to get his basil monolith he wants to put his power artifact on it and win the game it's as simple as that the cool thing is martin is playing with two hercules recalls that he can use to get rid of those uh, basil monoliths and he's playing with four steel artifacts so he can use the steel artifacts to get things done he's also playing with concordant crossroads in the sideboard i think he's going to put that main as well because coast is playing creatureless so i mean i, I do see i think pre-sideboard i think coast is going to win you know or at least he's the favorite but i think uh, uh after sideboard i see options here for for martin to actually take a win maybe you know because with steel artifacts with Urkel's recall with concordant crossroads the deck gets quicker he's got answers to the artifacts I mean, it could work. And I guess the card that we are missing here in the sideboard is a blue elemental blast. It's not there because that would be a great solution to those scary fireballs, but it's not in the sideboard. I do believe I saw red elemental blasts on the side of Ko. So that's going to be a slight like advantage for Ko. But but I see I see possibilities for Martin after sideboard. Anyway, before we go to our sideboards, let's first try to uh, to enjoy game number one. So let's go to Fajorn Enchantress versus Power Monolith. Game number one, here we go. Martin on the draw, taking a mulligan here, putting a card on the bottom. He's on green, blue Enchantress. He's taking on Koz, who's on red and blue, with a little bit of a black splash for Demonic Tour and Mind Twist. He's on Power Monolith. There we see a force by Martin and a pass. Another duel from Koz in the pass. So both players kind of playing lands, taking it easy. And ooh, there's a strip mine. Is he gonna use it? He is, and he's gonna strip the underworld sea. Sorry, the underground sea. It's, it's underworld dreams and underground sea. Anyway, stripping the sea. There is a sapphire. He's gonna tap it. What is he gonna do with the mana? He's gonna play a copy artifact, copying the sapphires. He's gonna ramp up. Remember, his deck is like full of big creatures as well. Playing Mahamoti Jin, Forces of Nature. So ramping up seems a good strategy. There we see another volcanic in the pass by Coast. Does mean that he's counter magic open right now. Wow, a soul ring. Look at this. Five mana for Martin. What is he gonna do with all that land, all that mana, I should say? Okay, there's a time walk. Does Coz have a counterspell? And if so, is he going to use it? Ooh, I believe I saw a counterspell there. Fireball, counterspell in hand. He's not countering. Oh, look at this. Time Twister. Oh, there's the counterspell though. Very good magic by Coz because, of course, Martin tried to kind of lure out that counterspell by playing the Time Walk. But Coz kind of saw through it, through it decided not to do anything, anything against the Time Walk and focus on that second card instead. And uh, that was very important, that counterspell. Now, both players not doing too much, it seems. Look at that. Coast just passing turn, missing a land drop. Martin kind of refilling his hand, not really finding anything. He's got six mana, you know. If he can find that Mahamoti. And he doesn't have enough green to play out uh, Force of Nature. And look at this. Coast is stuck. He's completely stuck. All he can do is pass turn, really giving time to Martin, but Martin not doing a lot with that time. He's just playing a lay druid here. The one, one creature that can untap a land if you tap it. There we see a disintegrate in hand for Coast. I'm sure he doesn't want to use this disintegrate against a druid. Then again, he also doesn't want to discard. I guess he does. The problem of course for Coast is here that he wants to keep his counter magic open. Let's see, is Martin going to do something? Tapping two here, playing a copy artifact. Interesting, is he going to copy even more? He's going to copy the Soul Ring. He's got so much mana. He is attacking with the Lay Druid. That is pretty cool, seeing your Lay Druid dealing damage. 
There we see a basalt monolith and Kosic is stuck on land. I mean, he can't find any lands. This is such a bad situation for him. Is he going to actually fireball? No, he's going to discard the fireball. He's being very disciplined here. And I think it's a good decision, but it's got to be tough for him to discard all of this stuff. But at least there's no pressure on the board. And Martin not really being able to cast anything back. Maybe he can do it now. Tapping five here. There's a clone. There's a mana drain on the clone. I think this clone even, it doesn't matter that much. But this is going to give Coast four mana next turn. So he can then drop the Basil Monolith. If, he's, if he then has a power artifact in hand, because he has a fireball in hand, he can actually close the game next turn. Wow, that would be insane. He could just win out of nowhere because of those three or four extra mana that he gets from his own mana drain. So even though the clone wasn't very, like, interesting because he just cloned the late Druid, it still can have a huge impact on this game one. I already saw a, a Bezel Monolith in the hand of Kos. I also know that he's got a Fireball. I don't know if he has a Power Artifact. So if he has a power artifact in his hand as well, he can just win it next turn. That would be crazy. And Martin kind of stuck here passing the turn. Also for Martin, I mean, yes, he's got a lot of mana, but if you're not finding your other pieces, there's an island. And I'm now thinking perhaps Martin played the clone first main. That means that the mana from the mana drain was given second main. So he cannot use the mana drain mana now, if you can still follow what I'm saying. Oh, he still has it though. Okay, so there's the Basil Monolith. Are we going to see a power artifact? Ooh, there we see power artifact. And that's it. <laughs> and this is how explosive... The uh, Power Monolith deck actually is, I mean, Ghost was basically doing absolutely nothing and all he needed was that one mana drain, having all the pieces in his hand already and win this game, steal this game out of nowhere. And I, I kind of feel bad for Martin because he had an option here. He got a lot of turns from Ghost, but he couldn't find his Enchantress. He couldn't get his draw engine to go. He couldn't find a big threat, so he was really stuck. Couldn't find a lot of green, by the way. Of course, he could use his late Druid to generate a second green. But, you know, he was kind of drawing blanks as well. Anyway, both players now diving into their sideboards. And we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two. Here we go. So Martin is on the play. Hopefully for him, he can find an Enchantress this turn. He does have a strong opening. Look at this. Pendlehaven into Lanara Elves. That's kind of nice. Mox Pearl Volcanic Pass. There's a Talaria. What can he do? Does he have an Enchantress? Nope, he's just attacking, pumping it up. So at least he's dealing two points of damage a turn. Okay, there's an Ancestral Recall. There's a Red Elemental Blast though. That is unfortunate. I do understand this decision by Martin because Ghost couldn't play out a Counterspell yet. So it made sense to kind of play it early aggressively. Is that a Regrowth in hand? Could try to cast a regrowth to get back the recall. Looks like he's attacking. No, he's gonna cast a regrowth. No counter spell from Kos. Ancestral back. Ah, oh, power sink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, remember, I, I'm, of course, I'm not sure how Kos sideboarded, but he, we could be looking at a deck with and red elemental blast and power sink and counter spell. It's gonna be really difficult for Martin to kind of play through it. Here we see a, a City of Brass tapping it here, spending three mana. What is he gonna do? Play a Basil Monolith. Would be so sweet to see a land now and a Steel Artifact on that Basil Monolith. Uh, but Martin's stuck on land, passing the turn. Oh, I kind of feel like, you know, y y of course Coase is the favorite, but if Martin has a little bit of more luck here, at least finding an Enchantress, his deck is built around the Vajuran Enchantress. Anyway, Coase's turn, I believe I see a Demonic Tutor there. Yep, there it is. That means he can tutor up one of his combo pieces. Now he doesn't have enough mana to end play it out and play a Fireball, right? Because if he wanna, wants to play a Power Artifact, he's got to tap double blue and he doesn't have 
any red to actually play the fireball. So it looks like Martin at least has another turn. Let's hope he's got something to disrupt Kose's plan. All he can do is attack here, putting Kose on 12. Ugh. Does Kose have a power artifact? I believe he looked up a fireball with that demonic tutor. There's an island. Oh, power artifact. Are we going to see that fireball? Oh, man. Oh, man. Like, this is not what, you know, you always hope for like a thriller of a match when you're making these videos. But this is part of old school magic as well. And this is, of course, part of the power monolith deck of a lot of combo decks anyway. If you combo off, you've usually won the game. And that's exactly what happens here. And... I think, Martin, you had bad luck. You didn't really have a chance to uh, to show us your deck. It is a beautiful deck. I've seen it in other games that weren't recorded. That, that's how it always goes. The game that's not recorded is the most spectacular, but I've seen it see, do really, really cool things. And I think it's great you're uh, bringing a deck uh, like the Enchantress deck to a tournament. I, I think it's beautiful, man. And uh, you've got a beautiful collection as well. So, so does Coast, by the way. Anyway, this was the episode for today. Sorry, guys. I always hope for exciting matches, but at least we got to see a Power Monolith deck in action in full swing. So maybe this inspires you to make a Power Monolith deck as well. Let me know in the comments below. And before you go, please take a moment to subscribe and ring that bell if you are not a subscriber yet, of course. And if you already are, please take a moment to like share and comment on this video all these things are free and they really help timmy talks move forward now there's one other last thing that you can do and that is become a patron of the channel and the cool thing is if you do that you're actually supporting my channel financially and you may be wondering what is he doing with that uh, money well actually i'm using it to go to tournaments like this to record this stuff to put it on youtube and of course to get some equipment things like that um, the cool thing is if you become a patron of the show you also get access to the Timmy Talks Discord server and there you can you know chat with me if you'd like that but you can also meet other patrons and uh, uh, you can also join our tournaments and other online events and of course your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every video what end scroll this end scroll Ik het als fikker te samba gezien.